Hello. Next up is aseptic connectors for this week's five minutes. Oh, right. Hello, Tim Sandal back with you with another uh, five minute video. And this week's subject is aseptic connectors. So um, we've also got only connect up on the uh, screen there. So anyone who's read um, Ian Forster's Howard's End will be aware of the significance of, um, of that. But it just seemed um, an appropriate um, thing to kick off the video with. But anyway, to the more serious point of aseptic connectors. So why do we use aseptic connectors? Well, this is part of the single use sterile disposable technology wave that's running through pharmaceuticals and is recommended by most regulators and is central to the technological progress that's been charted in the EU GMP Annex 1. And the reason is that they give us a better assurance of sterility for making the fluid path. They also happen to reduce the environmental impact as well in terms of the cost of sterilising these kind of connectors in-house. The uh, cost of running an autoclave is substantial, for example. And they address some of the weaknesses with old style connectors. So um, with old style connectors, that was very much reliant upon the technique of the person carrying it out. And if there was any contamination on the hands, then this could be transferred into the edge of the connectors and hence into the fluid that's flowing through the, the product and thereby creating a risk of microbial contamination. So the whole aseptic connector concept is designed to overcome this um, weakness. Weakness, hence the weightlifting guy on the slide. Uh, right, so what are aseptic connectors doing? Well, they maintain continuity of the sterile fluid pathway. And it has two connectors that have been sterilized by irradiation, by gamma irradiation. And they come together, they click, and then a removable membrane is, is pulled out. And that permits flow without any ingress of environmental contamination or without any risk of the hands of the operator. So it's a great concept, but we need to make sure that the aseptic connectors that we're purchasing are of the right quality. So how do we do this? Well, there's a mixture of microbial tests and there's a mixture of non-microbial tests. So with the non-microbial tests, then the most important ones are looking for leachables and extractables and overall levels of toxicity. So extractables are anything that can come from the material, from the plastic, and end up in the product. Leachables are anything that when the product goes through, that if it interacts with the material, then that produces a reaction that is problematic and also can then lead to toxins developing. And there's also then tests around robustness and seal integrity, so these are often tensile tests. So there'll be things like stretching the connector, bending the connector, flexing the connector to prove that it is robust, not just when it's made, but also at the end of its shelf life. But there's also microbial tests, which aseptic connectors are subjected to. And there's three broad tests. So the first is a dip test, where the connector is dunked into a soup of a microorganism. And I'll come to the microorganism in a second. Second one is a spray test where an aerosol of a microorganism is created and it's sprayed at both ends of the connectors. Then the connection is made using broth media to show ideally there's no growth, which then is a sign of a good connector. And then there's a full blown immersion test, which is basically soaking the whole completed connector into a vat of broth leaving it there for a substantial period of time. Now the microorganism, for those who have 
seen the sterile filtration video that I've made may remember me referring to a microorganism called Rebundomonas diminuta, which is a type of pseudomonad and it's very, very small. It's so small, in fact, that it's um, the cell diameter is 0.5 to 1.5 microns. So very, very tiny indeed. And um, again, much like sterile filter validation, a high concentration of this organism is made. It's purchased from a recognized source. This is the American type culture collection where it's coded 19146. And then this is created, and if none of the organisms are present when the broth mead is incubated, then we know we've got a great connection. So, very important technology. Now, when you're carrying out your work, it's important that you keep a lookout for anything that might indicate that the connector is not performing to standard. So, you want to look for if, if it's slightly discolorized, if it's gone yellowish, that's no good. If it's got appears to have well defects, that's no good either any discontinuities, any scratches, any markings, anything you think this is not fit for purpose in the bin, go and get another one and let someone know so they can raise a customer complaint. Because every so often you're making companies are making thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of aseptic connectors, then ever so often there's going to be um, a defect. So keep your eyes out for any of those. Okay, so this brings this uh, video to an end. Um, this has all been about aseptic connectors. I'm Tim Sandal. Hope you've enjoyed this one, and I'll be seeing you again soon. So, cheerio, good luck with your job, keep up the good work.